Sandra, welcome to my channel. One of my greatest loves is my love for the ocean and uh, I love exploring it as well and I want to make a display platter but I want to incorporate um, sea creatures and make them as much three-dimensional as possible. So this is going to be a learning whole learning thing for me I'm going to experiment it's going to be all about trial and error so I've decided on uh, this mold because the sides are quite flat I won't let, do anything much here so it can slump properly and I have drawn myself a picture of just a guidance for myself of what I would like to do uh, it will not probably not turn out exactly like the picture because as I go along I may change my mind several times as to what to do. I'm also going to use different techniques and different fuses and may make some of the elements for the piece several times on different fuses, different different schedules to see how they come out and which ones I like the best. I may have some disasters but um, I may, may be surprised as well. So I hope you enjoy this journey with me of trial and error. And um, so what I was thinking when I go scuba diving, what I see and what I like most to see, and there are so many things that will never all be able to fit onto one piece. So I've decided to do a sand patch with some shells and um, something I've seen a few times already I was lucky enough for um, blue spotted stingrays and they have these little humps just before their tails so I'm going to see if I can create that hump and um, some uh, reefs with some coral maybe some different colored uh, sponge coral I want to try to make a red um, coral fan or fan coral uh, some orange anemones with clownfish, a butterfly fish and then a little nudie branch. I don't see them often but they are so cute and you get so many different ones of different colors. The one I want to recreate is the pajama slug. So um, I'm going to draw templates on Coral Draw for my little pieces that I want to make and uh, if it all works out, then I will put it in PDF format and make it available. So I have drawn everything on my computer on Coral Draw. I've also drawn the lines for where I want, um, for example, my coral to go and my sand patch to go and the water to go, just to give me some guidelines and I can cut these out and then draw them onto my thin paper, then I have the lines within which I have to stay when I assemble, for example, my coral. I've got my little butterfly fish here and my uh, stingray. So I decided I'm first going to do all the uh, pieces that needs to be full fused. The background I'm going to do last because I'm not going to do the entire background a double layer. Some of them will be single layer for some of the, for example, the coral or the anemones to go into. And if I fill fuse that, it probably will become a little organic. But that is the nice thing about uh, making something from nature because uh, nature has its own rules. It does not have to be perfect. So I'm first going to make my little butterfly fish. And um, yes, I'm going to full fuse it. I'm going to do solid back layer, back layer of clear and then put my colored glass on top to a full fuse. This part will be single layer to become nice and thin and the little fin on top I'm going to do separate and then later on tack fuse it 
onto the fish for a few for a little three dimension so I will go ahead and start making this one I have cut and grinded all my little pieces for my butterfly fish. You will see over here, I did not make it long because I want to the, this little long fin to become very narrow, hopefully. So I'm just gonna put it over, over on top of this little board uh, before I fuse it, I will use some super glue to put everything together and um, after I also clean it up properly. So but this will give you an idea of what this little one is going to look like. Yeah, something like that. Before I go on to my next item, I just want to get back to this, the background or the bottom layer of this little fish. If you do not have a ring saw, um, you will have to cut this in parts as it is impossible to cut by hand these little corners. But for me, it's impossible. So you're going to have to make cutting lines but the cutting lines must not be on top of the lines where the colored glass goes, otherwise it won't fuse together. So your cutting lines is a corner. You can go like, for example, like this. And here is a corner like this. And for this corner, maybe like this. My fish is ready to be set aside for a full fuse. And uh, I will clean it all up before I um, put it in the kiln. And I have taken out a little piece of black frit and um, cut two small pieces of black claws, um, two different sizes uh, to full fuse so it goes round. I will then decide which one I will use for the eye which will be tacked fused on um, to the fish at the end. The next item I would like to make is the anemones and uh, which are going to go here. I'm looking at it upside down now, so you can look at it the right side around. So that will be the top. And I want the anemones to be inside this space. And um, so I'm going to cut out this for, as a guidance to have to uh, assemble the anemones so it doesn't go over these lines. So for the anemones, I need these long pieces. And so I always look like they're floating around in the water and they're quite soft. So I'm going to do two layer layers 
and then I'm going to full fuse them and then slump the one over the other one when I do a slump. So I'm just going to cut these into pieces so they can nicely fit into so this will have to be a little bit shorter so they can properly fit onto my template the pieces are cut for the anemone I cut a whole lot some medium some long and some shorter and I will also clean them before I assemble them, them on my kiln shelf and then I'd just like to show that um, when you do the full fuse I previously made these bubbles what I want to use as bubbles so for the larger ones I um, used two layers of gloss uh, for these. I've, I've used clear texture at the bottom and for the top I used this um, translucent, this uh, clear with the turquoise and white. And for the smaller ones, I just, these are just normal turquoise translucent and um, I just cut very small pieces and put them just like that single layer in the kiln for a full fuse and they made the bubbles and for some of the smaller ones I cut two squares and put them on top of each other corners different ways to make circles so I want to use these as bubbles in my piece so next I'm going to cut my seaweed I do not have a full template for the size so I'm just going to measure um, the longest and the shortest and cut them accordingly once again I'm going to make two to make two layers um, maybe contour fuse one over the other to get a bit of a three dimension. I've got no idea if this is gonna work. I'm a learner myself, I'm not a teacher. I have a wonderful teacher, um, Milani at Leos Loft in Rustenburg here in South Africa. And she has taught me so much that I can experiment, experiment by myself and uh, share what I do with others and maybe we can learn together. I have measured, um, how long the maximum length and then shorter length of for the seaweed. I have this beautiful green and yellow upper lesson. It's 2121 bullseye. All the glass that I've been using so far has been upper lesson, except for the clear tecta at the, on the bottom of the fish. It's a back layer and also the um, the bubbles which were made from clear and translucent glass. So I'm going to measure, I'm just going to make myself a guideline of 11 centimeters and 8 centimeters to make a couple of those sizes. Here I can cut a couple of smaller pieces and then I will also do no, a little bit shorter, nine centimeters. another nine or make it more eight 
to my foot this piece is there as well a little bit shorter finished cutting up my seaweeds I cut quite a lot so I'm going to fill full few some of them see how it looks and full few some of the anemones and um, then I'm also going to try with a contour fuse and I want to give some dimension to them as well so maybe put something underneath them to um, slump them over when I do the contour fuse. If I need more of these, I will just cut some more. And for the clownfish, at first I thought I was going to make them single layer with some powdered, powdered frits, fine frits. But I'm afraid that if um, I don't fuse them warm enough, but the colors may not develop properly. So I've drawn the outlines of my template onto the glass and this I will have to cut with the ring saw. I have cut my fish and I used a little super glue to stick the two pieces together. I have cleaned it and um, so I have a big white powder, number 13, it's bullseye. Stiff Black 101 and Tangerine Orange 25 and um, so I'm just putting my fish over my template so I have a guidance as where to go I'm just going to put on my mask to work with the powder powder frit and um, so I'm just going to lay this on and hopefully this will work. I'm going to lose some of the powder uh, which falls off but I don't want to lift the fish until I've got all my powder on. So hopefully this will work. Okay, the first clownfish is done and just to keep myself sane, I'm going to make the eye separate and the side fin separate and I will tack fuse them onto the little fish afterwards. So this is going to my kiln shelf immediately. Um, so nothing, nothing should happen to it. So while I am getting ready to um, assemble everything onto my shelf for the full views, I have um, decided I'm going to full fuse one fin as well for the uh, butterfly fish. I'm going to make it yellow and then try and put some white lines on it. If it doesn't work, I can always 
try with a contour fuse to make a fin. So I'm just going to cut my template and I will draw it onto my yellow and also a piece of clear tecta and then I will cut them and then I will do the powder. I've cut the fin and um, I'm going to use super glue again. I think I have a thing with super glue but it it works for me so the glass doesn't move around so I'm just going to let this dry a little bit and then I'm going to if I can pick it up I want to make like white lines from the back so I'm just going to cut some like triangles into my templates and um, something to pick just a little bit of sticky paper to pick up the template afterwards this is also tiny my template on there and um, then add some white powdered frit hopefully this will work hopefully this will look pretty but I can always as I said, I might try certain things different ways. Looks all right. So I'm also going to just put this one onto my kiln shelf. I had another thought before I get everything ready for full fuse is that I want to try out some colors with some frit and powdered frit for the sand patch. So I have French vanilla 398 and almond 139 and I'm going to add some powders, frit powders onto them. This is light bronze powder 1409. Okay, let me try again. I had some problems with opening the door, but I finally got it open. And uh, so this is the, the light bronze. I'm going to put some on the left side. I'm going to put some mink opal powder 119. I'll put that in the middle. And then on, on the almond, I'm going to put some medium. French vanilla frit, it's 137. Just gonna take it by hand. Just a 
see what that does on on the almond so this is just a test test pieces and we will see what happens to these okay i have my kiln shelf with my thin paper i have drawn my template which i've cut onto my thin paper this is for the orange anemones and i want to do this for the red coral but um, my template is not big enough so i'm just gonna use this round part of my circle just to extend it a, a little bit and um, So I can just go a little bit higher than what, as long as I just don't go over my mold, I have to watch out for that. So I'm just going to cut this piece out and then mark the rest of it. I've cleaned up some of my orange pieces for my anemone. So I'm just going to go ahead and assemble this. I did not clean all of them. I'm not going to use all of them in this fuse as um, I want to also try it with a contour fuse and see how they come out. Maybe I can use this one at the bottom and then tack fuse the contour fused one over this one we'll see how it goes it looks like they're all overlapping somewhere so I hope this one comes out nicely and then I'm going to also assemble my red coral my coral fan which I'm going to try to make so I've cut some stems and then I'm going to use red medium frit one to four bullseye again to uh, to make the corals and then I'm going to use medium fruit so I have a nice layer of the red fruit I just wanted to stay within the lines that I have drawn and then I'm going to make little lines in them so little holes So hopefully it will give that effect of the coral fan. Okay, I have changed to use a paintbrush which turned out to be much easier to use in order to get everything all the frit where I wanted it to be 
So hopefully that will work out quite nice. And this is my template for the seaweed. So I'm just going to draw that onto my thin paper. Remember this part from here is going to slump, so I don't want it to go in there, over there. And this is the side of the mold. Ah, uh, the mold actually goes round. So let me use this piece of paper as it is. I may have misjudged. I'm going to have to redraw this. Right, I've redrawn it. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the size. So once again, I've not cleaned all my pieces um, as I want to try to do with this with a contour fuse as well. Okay, I'm just going to do it like this and um, so my shelf is ready for a full, full fuse and um, this is also the time if you want to make bubbles you can add your circles and little dots to make um, bubbles and then I've added some more little pieces of coarse black thread just to make eyes and um, I'm really excited to see how this will come out. The first pieces have been fused, full fused, and um, as for the, the seaweed, I'm not entirely happy, it does not look right, so I will redo the seaweed, but with a contour fuse. The anemones, I'm quite happy with. Um, I am going to do anatomy with a contour fuse as well to see what that looks like. I've cut enough pieces. I have um, a lot of pieces left from what I cut so I'm going to retry this and then I will use my final piece. I will use the one that I like most. And then the coral, the um, fan coral, I like this. I just would like to spice it up a little bit and uh, contour fuse some frit onto it just to make it a little bit more um, dimensional and um, the little clownfish they came out quite nice they're going to they will look nice on the anemone I have little eyes for them which I will tack fuse onto them and then I also need to make the little side fins which I will also contour fuse and tack fuse onto them uh, when I do the tack fuses then the little butterfly fish I really like this one I'm happy with how it came out and um, the side fin is a bit thick for me, the six millimeters. So I'm going to make another one, but just contour fuse it. So it's just a little bit thinner. The white, I do like the white lines. They did out, come out quite nice. Um, and then the little eye, I made different sizes eyes. And um, so I've chosen the size and those, those sizes for for the fish that I'm going to use and then my two that I tried out for the sand patch the almond uh, came out it's 
it's too pink for me and uh, so I'm going to use the um, the French vanilla with the light bronze for the sea patch I've come to the end of part one of making my seascape underwater seascape display platter and in part two I will be doing all the contour fusing I will retry making the seaweed and also experiment more with the anatomy as well as with the coral I will be making the reef the nudie branch as well as the blue spotted stingray I will make a fence for the fish and then after that I will make the background for the display platter which will be a full fuse in part three I will be doing all the tack fusing putting everything together and then also slumping and if you want to see more please subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching